Hey everybody, Jim here with another retro game pickups video, which uh, it has been a while uh, since I've done one of these because as of late, uh, most of the game shopping I've been doing has been for other people, um, mostly for the, uh, the Patreon, which if you don't know, um, I send video games out in the mail through my uh, Patreon page. Um, so if you've seen on my Twitter or on my uh, Instagram, some of the pictures I've shared, like this box is filled to the brim with games. Uh, pretty much all that is is for other people. So I've kind of slowed down my collecting ways, and uh, I've instead started focusing on helping other people expand uh, their game collections. But I do still uh, pick up the odd game for myself here and there. I've um, been playing a lot of Switch games, but I still like to uh, grab some good retro stuff when I can. Some of it a little pricey, some of it not so much. But I'm kind of picking my spots, so to speak. Um, with the uh, retro games I pick up. So I've got a stack of eight or nine games here that uh, I've picked up for myself recently, and uh, I think they're all pretty cool. So we're going to take a look at those right now, starting with this game off the top of the stack for the Famicom. It is TMNT 2, The Manhattan Project for the Famicom, which you might be more familiar with it on the NES as TMNT 3, The Manhattan Project. Uh, here, uh, the arcade game is just simply called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and the, the first game, the action platformer game, is it has a Japanese title. It's like Kame Ninja something or other. Um, so T Manhattan Project is TMNT 2 here. Um, love this game. This is actually my favorite of the 8-bit uh, Turtles games. Um, gameplay is really fun. Um, I like that you can just uh, like throw all the foot soldiers, so that's pretty cool. Your special attacks are cool. And uh, multiplayer is a lot of fun, great graphics, great sound, and I love the, the variety of boss battles as well. Um, just because when I was a kid, I had a lot of Turtles figures, some of them were mine, some of them were hand-me-downs for my older brother, but I remember having lots of, like, this this uh, rogues gallery of all the Turtles villains, so like Bebop and Rocksteady, and like Slash, and Dirtbag, and Groundchuck, and uh, Baxter Stockman, all these great characters, so it's, uh, it's awesome that there's just so many... Uh, boss characters in this game, and um, you know, that's kind of like my era for like TMNT, all those characters and stuff. Um, so yeah, the Manhattan Project, great game, my uh, favorite of the 8-bit Turtles games. Uh, loose card for the Super Famicom, this is in the Gambari Goemon series. Uh, this is Soreyuke Abisumaru. Uh, Abisumaru being uh, Goemon's sidekick, I think in, what was it, like the Mystical Ninja on the SNES, he's called uh, Dr. Yang, is that what his name is? Um, this though, uh, you know, unlike the uh, myriad of like action platformers in the Goemon series, uh, this is a puzzle game where you have to uh, direct Abisumaru on sort of like a, an isometric um, grid of sorts. They're like little arrows pointing in all different directions and he just sort of walks automatically and you have to flip the arrows around and send him going in the right direction. So it's kind of a maze where you have to um, make sure that one, Ebisumaro doesn't walk off the edge, and uh, two, that he gets to the goal within the time limit. And then there are also bonus point items on the board too if you want to sort of deviate and go for those. Um, so it's pretty fun, starts off easy enough, but then gets like um, pretty damn challenging the further you get into it. Um, so it's pretty fun. I picked this up for very cheap. I think this was like six bucks. I actually picked this up at Super Potato um, in a, I think a video. If I haven't posted it yet, uh, I will be posting it, but uh, I kind of uh, ripped off my friend uh, Scruffy Looking RGB. He does a 500 yen challenge when he goes to like a, a hard off or a book off somewhere and tries to find like the best Famicom or Super Famicom cart he can for 500 yen, which is a little less than five bucks. Uh, but going into Super Potato, though, I gave myself a limit of a thousand yen. So I was going to go in there, and I wasn't going to spend any more than ten bucks on anything. And uh, this is what I ended up grabbing for like uh, six hundred and some odd yen. And I've actually been having a lot of fun with it. You know, I'm a puzzle game fan, and uh, it's pretty pretty challenging, uh, pretty fun. So yeah, Sora Yuke Ebisumaru for the Super Famicom. Good game. And uh, speaking of the Gambare Goemon series, and speaking of scruffy looking... R RGB. Uh, I picked up this game from a Mondai Shoten, uh, which you may have seen the game hunting video that we shot together. Um, but this is Gambare Goemon 2. 
uh, for the Super Famicom. This is a really just excellent game. For the most part, it is a side-scrolling action platformer. A lot of fun, plays really well, beautiful graphics, uh, great soundtrack as well, and uh, a few different characters to play as, and uh, even though I haven't got to try it out yet, there is a multiplayer in this game, which is very cool, and there are like these boss battles where you get into this big uh, Goemon like mech suit and fight other giant mech suits, like a big sumo wrestler mech and stuff like that, um, so it's uh, very cool. Uh, so this is just one of the Goemon games on the Super Famicom, that did not get a release in North America, or anywhere outside of Japan, actually. Um, so the first game, The uh, Legend of the Mystical Ninja, that got a US release, but then there's Goemon 2 and Goemon 3 and Ebisumaru, and I believe there's another Goemon side game as well. Um, but none of these were ever released outside of Japan, and uh, playing this one, I haven't finished it yet, but I intend to, and then I want to move on to Goemon 3, um, but I am enjoying this game uh, a lot. First, uh, learned of it watching Jimmy Hoppa, actually. Jimmy's a huge Goemon fan, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to say I've been really enjoying this game, and I think I picked it up for, for not very much. Um, uh, price escapes me. It might have been like 16 bucks or something like that. Um, which is a great deal on, you know, this game. It's really good, and it's boxed, great shape, all that stuff. So I'm very happy with that. So Gombody going on 2 on the Super Famicom. Fantastic game. Uh, really great, and I recommend playing it. Uh, that's definitely going to be an import game of the day at some point. And uh, one more Super Famicom game here. Uh, another, um, it's an anime-based game. Very, like, long-running manga and anime series. Uh, this is Gegege no Kitaro. Uh, and this, um, when I picked it up, I didn't really, like, I, I know there are a bunch of Kitaro games. There's games on the Famicom and the, the PlayStation as well. I believe there's supposed to be a really good one. Um, so I didn't really um, know per se what this game was going to play like. I just sort of looked at the pictures on the back. And uh, in my mind, like, I knew there were some Kitaro, like, platformers out there. Um, this game is... Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it like an action platformer per se because the stages are, are quite small So for the most part what happens is like enemies will enter the stage You'll kill them and then a, a boss will come and you'll defeat the boss and you'll rescue uh, One of your friends and you move on to the next stage. So there are some, some areas where there's like a little bit of platforming um, But for the most part this is more of just like a, I don't know like maybe a, a boss rush kind of game um, so there's not like left to right these, you know, not like, you know, Goemon 2, for example, where it's a very traditional side-scrolling platformer. This one, the stages are smaller, kind of confined. You defeat a series of enemies, and then you beat a boss, and then you move on to the next uh, next uh, area. Um, so uh, I would say, like, I'm slightly disappointed with this game. I thought it was going to be a more traditional uh, side-scrolling platformer, but um, still, like, graphics are nice, sound design is pretty cool. Um, it's just, uh, it, well, it doesn't hold a candle to Goemon 2, I'll say. I think this would have been a much better game if it was a more traditional platformer. But as it stands, it's pretty fun. Um, just not what I was expecting. But Gegege no Kitaro on the Super Famicom. Uh, still pretty cool. Uh, a potential candidate maybe somewhere down the line for import game of the day. Okay, next up, uh, we have a couple of PlayStation games here. And, uh, this, uh, first one... Uh, you may have seen, I think, one of the last Sudugaya videos I did. I went to the Sudugaya in Shinjuku and picked up a couple of games for myself. Uh, and this was one of them. Uh, this is Klonoa Beach Ball. Uh, yeah, Beach Ball. And I believe this was also released in PAL regions, but never got a North American release. I had never heard of this game uh, until I came across it there in that Sudugaya. Uh, I'm a Klonoa fan. I like the original Klonoa on the PS1. And uh, Klonoa 2 on the PS2, and I, I, don't, I haven't played like the GBA games or anything, um, but I like Klonoa. So when I came across this, a Klonoa beach volleyball game, that sounded like uh, kind of an interesting concept to me. And uh, I think it was only like uh, 10 bucks or something. Um, and I've, I don't know if I've ever played a volleyball game like I, I haven't liked, like uh, Super Spike B-Ball on the NES or... Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball even, you know, they're usually pretty fun because it's a really simple gameplay concept, and that's pretty much true here as well. Just, you can pretty much play most of the game with just one button, just smacking the ball back and forth. 
but you have some like power shots and things like that it's pretty fun a bunch of different Klonoa characters to play as um, colorful graphics uh, pretty nice soundtrack so really just kind of a fun little distraction of a game again it was like 10 bucks so I was like you know you can't go wrong it's Klonoa it's volleyball it's 10 bucks you know who really cares um, sat down played it and had some fun with it so um, yeah definitely if uh, you've never uh, tried a Klonoa game play one of the platformers obviously um, the Kl uh, Klonoa Beach Volleyball, I would say, yeah, if you can find this for like 10 bucks, uh, yeah, it's worth picking up because it's a fun little beach volleyball game and kind of quirky too, kind of an oddity that you would take this series and then apply it to volleyball. But hey, there it is. Uh, it worked out. Similar to Dead or Alive. Weird kind of thing, but it works. Um, also, for the uh, PlayStation, this is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up uh, published by Capcom, but I think it was... There's like a whole bunch, there's like Team 17 software, Ocean software, um, so I don't know, it's developed by someone but published by Capcom. This is X2, and uh, this is a side scrolling shoot 'em up. Um, pretty good. The graphics have sort of like a 3D rendered look to them. Um, I mean, it looks okay. It's a pretty good looking game, you know, colorful, flashy, and everything. Um, kind of uh, tough as far as shooters go, or at least I thought it was. Um, just because it feels, it felt to me like, I don't know, like maybe you have a big hitbox or something, but, uh, I don't know, kind of tough as a shooter, but, you know, fun, it controls well, uh, you know, the challenge is definitely there, um, and when you collect power-ups, there's all kinds of different power-ups to, uh, to collect, as you might expect, like homing shots and powerful things and shields and all that kind of stuff, little option things to help your ship out, and, uh, what I like was as I was dying and continuing, I wasn't losing all of my power-ups, so it was at least fair, um, in that regard, because that's one thing that can kind of like kill your motivation to keep going. Like when I play Gradius or some other shooters, like 16-bit shooters, like I go for like a no-death run because once you die and you're back to your beginning power level, you're just like, well, all the wind's out of your sails. So X2, um, I'm gonna, I guess maybe I need a little more time with this one um, because I gave it a playthrough and then set it aside and started playing other stuff. So it didn't leave like a huge impression on me. It's not like, oh my god, this is like some great shoot 'em up. I, there's still other PS1 shooters I'd rather be playing. Um, you know, stuff like Strikers 1945 or I think even um, maybe like uh, Sonic Wings or, or something like that. Um, so X2, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of mixed. I don't, I'm not going to say it's like mediocre because I think it's better than a mediocre game, but it's, um, I don't know. It didn't really click with me right away, but I'm going to play it a little more. I am a shooter fan. I would say this is a, a decently made shooter. It's just, I don't know, maybe i got to get better at it. Who knows? Um, but X2, uh, for the PS1, picked it up, shoot em up. I'm a shoot em up fan, so I was going to get it eventually. Um, these next two games, last two games, uh, I picked these up for uh, uh, Sega consoles. we got some Sega goodness at the end of the video. One Mega Drive and one Saturn game, and both of these were... Um, they were a little bit pricey, but they were two games I had been wanting for a long time and wanting to play for a long time, and that's kind of the benefit of like picking your shots when it comes to collecting games. Instead of just buying up a bunch of games, save save your money a little bit. You know, if you got something you know on the wish list, so to speak, um, go for those. You know, it, it gets a lot easier when you don't uh, blow quite so much money on co collecting kind of like superfluous games, if you know what I mean. Uh, because I've had that tendency in the past. Uh, but first up, let me read the full title. It is Yu Yu Hakusho Makyo to Itsusen. Makyo to Itsusen. Yu Yu Hakusho. So this is a Yu Yu Hakusho 2D fighter developed by Treasure, of all people. So, you know, Gunstar Heroes and all that good stuff. Um, and then Yu Yu Hakusho being probably my favorite anime series of all time. I, I've been wanting this game for, I don't know, like years now. And usually it's floated around like uh, 80 to 100 bucks for a copy of this game. And I was always just like, no, nah, maybe not, you know. Um, but finally decided to uh, pick this one up. And I'm glad, I'm, I glad, I, I'm glad I did. I, uh, I like this game a lot. This is a, a pretty uh, exceptional 2D fighter. Um, it's like there are a couple, you know, it's treasure, so there's going to be some some kind of gimmicks to it. So one of them is that this is a four-player 2D fighting game. So it's pretty cool because even if you only have, you know, you're playing by yourself, 
you can assign um, computer characters and you can do like battle royals and team fights and all that kind of stuff and you can jump back and forth between the foreground and the background so you can fight on different planes with four different characters at once um, so it gets pretty wild um, but it's a lot of fun there are you know some fairly I guess you could say like traditional uh, fighting game moves in it and some not so traditional and the character selection uh, is pretty good they had some um, like kind of odd uh, like characters I didn't expect to see like the younger Tagore like the guy that can like contort his body and stuff he's in there and he has some uh, interesting attacks he can do he's always uh, an entertaining character um, but yeah, so Yu Yu Hakusho on the uh, Mega Drive, um, there's another Yu Yu Hakusho Mega Drive game called Yu Yu Hakusho Gaiden, which is more like an action, uh, sort of like over the shoulder view kind of game, um, which is okay, um, but this is, in my opinion, the Yu Yu Hakusho game to own on the Mega Drive, um, it's really good, Treasure did the series justice, and uh, I would say that this game is also better than the Super Famicom Yu Yu Hakusho games as well. This. Uh, in my opinion, now that I own it and I've played it, uh, the best 16-bit Yu Yu Hakusho game uh, for sure. So Yu Yu Hakusho uh, Makio to uh, Itsusen. Okay, fantastic game. Or just, hey, Yu Yu Hakusho Treasure on the Mega Drive. Great game. And uh, the last game I picked up, something for the Sega Saturn uh, that I've been wanting for a while. Again, it was a, a more expensive game. Um, and since, uh, again, since I've been a little more reserved, a little more frugal with my game collecting, um, I had a little bit of excess, uh, excess cash. So when I came across this one for a price that for what this game usually goes for was pretty reasonable, I decided to pick it up. And this is, uh, KO Flying Squadron 2, um, which is... I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, the original KO Flying Squadron on the uh, Sega CD, um, as far as I know, because I've never played it, but it is a uh, side-scrolling shoot 'em up. Um, this game, on the other hand, is a mix of mostly side-scrolling platforming, um, which is a lot of fun. It's pretty good. You can jump on enemies and get little weapons and fight them and things like that. That's pretty cool. Um, but that, it mixes that with side-scrolling shoot 'em up stages, which are also quite fun. You get power-ups and um, blow away the enemies and everything. So the gameplay here is is pretty solid. It's fun. It's a fun platformer um, with fun shooting sections thrown in there. Um, I think a big the big selling point for this game though is just the the presentation. It's um, the the exaggerated anime art style, um, the just obnoxiously like colorful visuals. Um, the soundtrack, which is like, kind of, you know, it's, the whole thing has like this weird kind of like wacky, exaggerated, like Japanese feel to it. So there's like, there's these, uh, there's anime cutscenes. Uh, the characters themselves have designs that are very comical, um, as do the enemies and boss characters. There's some pretty, you know, wacky, wild stuff in here. Um, so graphics, fantastic, beautiful visuals, great character designs, great stage designs, great soundtrack. And a fun gameplay. It's a fun platformer and a fun shoot 'em up, uh, all rolled into one. Um, so while this is a fairly pricey game, um, I'm happy that I picked it up, and I'm happy I have this in the collection now because it's something I've wanted in the collection for a while, and something I've been enjoying playing. So Ko Flying Squadron 2, um, another game that's definitely going to be featured as import game of the day at some point. Good stuff there, um, especially uh, Japanesey, if you will. And now I got to, uh, you know, cleanse the old parched throat here. Okay. So that is it for this uh, pickups video, retro games. Uh, like I said, I've been picking up some, uh, uh, the odd Switch game here and there. I've been playing Zelda, uh, Age of Calamity, which is great. And uh, East Origins and uh, Catherine Full Body. All that stuff is really good. Um, but yeah, these are the uh, retro games I've picked up recently, and I'm happy with them. I've been enjoying playing them. I got some good platformers, puzzlers, shoot 'em ups, that that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm happy to have all this stuff in the collection. And uh, again, you know, kind of narrowing it down to games that are either um, interesting and not so expensive, or just like stuff that I've been wanting for a long time, um, and not so much like buying in bulk, uh, reserving that for the uh, the patrons. Um, so just, you know, 
buying up stacks of games and then shipping them out all over the world, which has been keeping me busy. Um, so uh, it's busy, productive, so I like that a lot. But anyway, uh, everybody down in the comments, if you got anything to say about any of these games, whether positive or negative, uh, let me know. And uh, until next time, that'll do it for this pickups video. So take care, everybody, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.